to Matthew 21. Now, I, this same story is <clears throat> many places in the scripture. In fact, <clears throat> it was prophesied hundreds of years before Jesus ever came. In, in Zechariah 9.9, 9, it tells a, a, a very uh, beautiful story. Rejoice greatly, O daughters of Zion, O daughter of Zion. Shout, O daughter of Jerusalem. Behold, thy king is coming unto thee. He is just in having salvation, lowly and riding upon an ass, and upon a colt, the foal of an ass. And I will cut off the chariot from Ephraim, and the horse from Jerusalem, and the battle bow shall be cut off, and he shall speak peace unto the heathen. And his dominion shall be from sea even to sea, and from the river even to the ends of the earth. Very wonderful prophecy, long before Jesus was ever born. And some of it has, is still even taking place now. We see Israel coming back into the land. And, and their dominion, they are so strong. And Israel has become a world power. But when Jesus Christ comes back, and he's coming back soon, his dominion is going to be from sea to sea. As we sing in the American anthem, from, from sea to shining sea, you know. But at world over, he's going to have a world, he's going to rule the world for 1,000 years to show us how it could have been. All told about long before Jesus ever came. And as for thee also, and I'm, I'm in Zechariah chapter 9, now verse 11. As for thee also, by the blood of thy covenant, I have sent forth thy prisoners out of the pit where is no water. And you know, Israel is dry today. It's often seen in Isaiah, say Isaiah 53 and here, as dry, a desert. And Israel is a desert. But you know today they have enough water that they could um, give water to their neighbors and get, allow, allow them to farm as Israel is now an exporter of food, etc. The, the, the desert blooms again and is blooming more and more. Of course they, they're in war right now, but we see what God is, when God comes back, Israel will bloom and it has blooming. And Christ will come sometime soon. I don't know when. No man knows the day or the hour. But he's going to live and reign right there in Israel. As for thee also, by the blood of thy covenant, I have sent forth thy prisoners out of the pit where therein is no water. Yes. Spiritual world is dry, isn't it? But Jesus Christ, the light of the... It's also dark. But Jesus Christ, the light of the world, is coming back soon. I, I couldn't help but even look at... Uh, down, you know, and, 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 and look at, uh, at, at what's talking to, to us. Uh, uh, it's really uh, um, the, 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 uh, that, that we are going to be blessed by God. And, and in verse 10 it says, ask, chapter 10 rather of Zechariah, ask ye of the Lord rain in the time of the latter rain. So the Lord shall make bright clouds and give them showers of rain to everyone grass in the field. For the idols have spoken vanity, and the diviners have seen a lie, and have told false dreams. They comfort in vain. Therefore, they want, they want their way as a flock. They went their way as a flock. They were troubled, because there was no shepherd. But our Jesus Christ world came into the world, and he was not received even by Israel. And so we go to Matthew chapter 21 to, for the story today, although it's in, you know, really at several places in the gospel, the very same story. And when they drew nigh, well, <laughs> you know, I, as I prepared this, as I'm looking at this, I couldn't help but to see what just happened just prior to Jesus coming into the temple grounds. You know, we're all looking at the temple today. And uh, at the time of Jesus, the temple uh, was being run by, by Rome, really, you know, because Rome had, had put its own, its, its soul, the, 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 the office of high priest to the high priest. I mean, and, and out in the, uh, out in the, uh, the courtyards there, 
uh, uh, the, you have the temple, you have the court of the Gentiles. And Israel had the, had the job to be an example to and, and, and the winner of the Gentiles to God. Instead, they put a wall around the, the, that area uh, of the temple, you know. And they made it a, a place of business. Made it a place of business. And there was a lot of cheating going on. It was a, it was a den of thieves. Today we see the Muslims in, on that space saying, you can't have it, you can't have it, you know, you can't have it for the worship of Jehovah. You know, they want to worship, really, if you go into the history of it, the moon, you know, that's, that's the old moon god, but they're all confused about who God is. And that's what Zechariah was talking about. The people, were all they all had their, 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 their fables, <laughs> but Israel had the truth. And, uh, and, and it was being run by the Romans at the time that Jesus came back. But just before he came back to his temple, it, it, there's a little story, just a little clip, and it says, Then Jesus unto his, his disciples, verily I, disciples, Verily I say unto you, that a rich man shall hardly enter the kingdom of heaven. And again I say unto you, it, it is easier... Um, I lost my place, sorry. but That was good, but that's not what I'm trying to say. Um, and... and, and uh, and the multitude rebuked them because they should, uh, they should hold their peace. But they cry. These are a couple of uh, blind men. And the crowd is telling them, be quiet, be quiet. And these two blind men are saying, Joe, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. And so, um, oh, and, and they're saying, have mercy on us, O Lord, uh, thou son of David. You know? So that stops Jesus. And he turns to them, you know. And, and the crowd, the multitude rebuked them because they should have held their peace. <laughs> Just like the children crying today in this church and crying out to Jesus. Wasn't that wonderful? Isn't that beautiful? That's what we should incur. This, I want this church to be a house of prayer and a place, a place where we can shout Hosanna, you know, and praise God. And the children too should praise God. And, and the Jesus stood still and called unto them and said, What wilt ye, ye that I shall do unto you? You don't think that Jesus Christ knew what these two blind men wanted on the side of the road, but he wanted them to speak it. And so that's why we pray. Yes, God knows what you're going to pray about before you pray. But he wants you to pray it. He wants you to ask. And he responds to you when you ask, visibly, verbally, ask him what you want. Don't just say, God knows. No, no. Tell him. And so they said to him, Lord, that our eyes may be opened. And so Jesus had compassion on them and touched their eyes. And immediately their eyes received sight and they followed him. That's what I want. I want this to be a place where the blind can see, you know, and the deaf can hear, and, and the sick can receive uh, uh, re, re, um, uh, life and healing, uh, if, if, if not physically, spiritually. And that's where it's really at. That's the most important thing. When you pray for someone, uh, pray for them spiritually. That's the most important thing. And uh, you, you know, it, the, the physical is secondary, but it's important. Pray for all, for all things, everything. When they drew nigh to Jerusalem, <clears throat> they come to Bethpage into the Mountain of Olives. Then sent Jesus two disciples, saying unto him, Go into the village over against you, and straightway you shall find an ass tied in a colt with her. Lo with, with her. Loose them and bring them unto me. Now we, we heard that right in Zechariah. <clears throat> Going to be a... A donkey and, and, and its baby, you know, right there. Now, Jesus probably arranged that. He probably talked to the, the person. As I've heard it said. He talked to the person, and, and they were ready. But they needed to be, the person, had, they had to go up and identify uh, what Jesus had already arranged. Or not. You know, Jesus at this time, in the minds of the people. And so when they, they come with a message, and this is from Jesus, uh, sure, take, take, the, take, take the colt and... and, and uh, and the donkey. And all this was done that it might be fulfilled, which was spoke by the prophet, saying, Tell you the daughter of Zion, behold, thy king cometh unto thee, meek and sitting upon an ass, the colt of a foal of an ass. And the disciples went and did as Jesus commanded them, and brought the, the ass and the colt and put them on their clothes, uh, uh, and put on them their clothes, and they set him thereon. So they, as the children were showing, here yeah, they. They, they started a procession, and they put clothing uh, on, the, on the animal, and then they sent Jesus into the city. Now, Jesus had been here before. At the very beginning of his ministry, he went into the temple grounds, and he cleansed the, um, the, the, the court of the Gentiles, you know? And, and, and he was very angry. That's, that's righteous anger. 
you know, the, uh, the temple belonged to Jesus. It was his. I don't care if the, if, the, if the Muslims put a temple up there that nobody dares to tear down, you know. Uh, and, and I don't care if, the, if Rome had, had, had sold the, the office of pre, high priest. It still all belonged to Jesus. He, was, he came into his temple. You see, nothing we can do here can change the mind of God. He knows what he's going to do. And what everything he says he's going to do, he's going to do. He is going to do. When he says he's going to come back, and he's going to come back in power, and next time he's not going to be riding on a donkey. The donkey symbolized peace. Jesus came to bring peace, forgiveness, love to the world. They weren't ready for it. Next time he comes, he's going to come riding a white war horse, okay? It's going to be big, all right? And he's going to come regal. He's going to be regal. He's going to be God, King, Almighty, the Son of God, Jesus Christ, coming in conquest. And praise God, we see in Revelation chapter 9, we see us, <laughs> the rest of us, guess what? We're going to be with him. And we're going to be dressed in white. That is if we... <clears throat> If we uh, aren't still alive, <laughs> you know. But we'll be raptured out <laughs> of here and come back, you know. Or we'll die and we'll come back with him dressed in white. And we'll be a part of his entourage as he comes back to the temple. But here he comes in peace, very, very meekly. Now, the, to, to the high priest, they didn't think it was meekly at all. They're horrified. Jesus Christ here clearly proclaims who he is. He is Jesus, Messiah. Not just Jesus, but Jesus Christ, the Anointed One, Messiah. He is the Son of God. He is the King of the world. He is on the temple of heaven right now. Father, Son, Holy Spirit, one, one God on, on the temple, on, on, the, on heaven, in heaven, excuse me, living and reigning over the whole universe, okay? He's the king of the world. And so he clearly proclaims who he is. The high, but very, in a very meek way, he comes in peace. He doesn't come with, in war. He doesn't bring his army this time. He could have just said, in a, uh, just <laughs> thought it or, or, or spoke it. And the, and the, uh, the angels would have come <laughs> in their legions, okay? Uh, you know, Michael the Archangel could have been. He could just speak it. <laughs> and they'd all have been dead. But no, he came to die. He came to die. But he came very clearly. I often wonder how the Jehovah Witnesses have the audacity to say that Jesus Christ is Michael the Archangel. Or that, or, or, or that Jesus Christ is not God. Where do they get the audacity to say that? I mean, it's all through the New Testament. They claim they, they believe the New Testament. It's on every page. After I left studying with them, because I studied with them for a while, and, and after I left studying with them, I saw Jesus Christ everywhere in the Bible. As I studied it, it was there everywhere. And here it is again. Jesus Christ clearly, now he's making the high priest really angry. He's making the, the, the lost in the community very uncomfortable because he's making uh, um, claims that are eternal and heavenly. So, and the disciples went... And, and, and tell, tell us, tell you this, and, and spoke the, the prophet saying, and, and all this was done that it might be fulfilled, that tell you the, uh, ye the daughters of Zion, behold, thy king cometh unto thee, meek and sitting upon an ass, and a colt, a foal of an ass. And went and did as Jesus commanded them, and brought the ass and the colt, and put them on the clothes, and they set them there. And, and a very great multitude spread their garments in the way. Others cut down branches from the trees and strawed them in the way. And this is what the children were doing today, and we need to do every day in our hearts. And the multitudes that went before and, and that followed cried, saying, Hosanna to the Son of David. Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Jesus is the one whose line that Seth was in, the king, the king, king David was in, when he was told that he would have a son that would be king and he would, he would live and reign forever. And, the, and, and David saying, I, I, what, what, I can't live and reign forever. I'm going to die. You know, He didn't understand that uh, out, out of his loins would, would come the next and the next and the next, all the way up to Joseph and then Jesus Christ. 
who is the, 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 the long-awaited one, that trail of blood. All the blood sacrifices, all are pointing to the one that would come and who would die on the cross. That's what the blood sacrifice was all about from the very beginning. They, was, they were doing a blood, they didn't even understand it. They were doing a blood sacrifice that would represent the cross of Jesus Christ when he would shed his blood for our sins. This is the man, now the, God, and the Son of God being proclaimed King and he accepts the worship, he accepts the, uh, the, uh, the very fact that he said, if you don't do this, the very rocks, and there was all creation, will cry out for me. Because he's the creator. He, remember, he created the sun, the moon, the stars, everything. The little baby Messiah, the Messiah today, Pat, your grandchild, that's God's child. That's God's child. And she, even her name is pointing to Jesus Christ. All points to Jesus Christ, the Messiah. And, 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 and when he was come into Jerusalem, all the city was moved, saying, Who is this? Isn't that the question today? My friends, when you go out the door and leave this church, there's no question in here. But when you go outside that door, you go, the question is, Who is Jesus Christ? Is he a prophet? Is he an angel? Is he a man? Is he the son of God? And I want you to know that he's fully man and he's fully God and he is the son of God. He's the king of the universe. That's who he is. You tell people that. And Jesus went into the, in, into the temple of God and cast out them that sold and bought in the temple and overthrew the tables of the money changers and the seats of them that sold doves. <clears throat> My friends, they were selling the offering <laughs> to the Gentiles, but they didn't want them in the temple. And yet those are the, it's being done out there, uh, all, this, all this, uh, this, this business. And God was very unhappy. He wants his house to be a house of prayer. You know, it all belonged to him. If Jesus Christ had called down a, a lightning bolt and destroyed them all, including the temple, he, it, he, it was perfectly all right because he is God. Okay, he is God. He can do that on Saturday and he can do that on Sunday because he is God. You understand? He is God. He's the, he's the Holy One. And so he goes in for the second time and he cleanses the temple of the sin and the, and the filth. He doesn't want it there. He overturns the tables. Get out of here. Get out of here. He takes a whip and he whips them and says, he was violent. He was angry. Righteous anger. We, you ain't seen nothing yet. <laughs> Wait till Christ comes back riding the horse. His horse is going to be wet up to the bridle there with blood of mankind. Oh, he's going to do. He's gonna, you're going to see a righteous God then. Uh, Malachi, read Malachi when Christ comes back. It'll, you'll see what's going to happen. He's going to come back and we're going to come back with him. He's going to come back and almighty all the power of the universe. And he said unto them, it is written, my house shall be called the house of prayer but ye have made it a den of thieves. In verse 13. I don't, know why, I don't know why it falls on 13 but it sure wasn't lucky for those folks. and For the, any, any who are found without Jesus Christ. My friends, when Jesus Christ comes back the second time, you need to know Jesus as your Savior. Any that you love, make sure that they know Jesus. You're, you're not a friend to somebody if you don't share with them Jesus. You've got to wait the time. Wait the right time. But, and, 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 and pray for... You pray. Before you present the gospel, you pray and pray. But by all means, present the gospel. Can you imagine when Jesus comes back riding the white horse, what it's going to be like for those who do not know Jesus Christ as their Savior? And their Lord. You and I, we're going to be called out of here. We're going to get raptured out. There's going to be a time, you know, seven years of, of darkness in the world before Christ comes back. Right now, this is the time, this is the age of grace. Tell people, tell your children, tell your grandchildren. Don't be afraid. Tell them. And, 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 and the blind and the lame came to him in the temple and he healed them. So Jesus Christ, in one hand, he's, he's, uh, He's casting over the temples, and the, the other hand, before he got there, and now that he got there, he's healing. He's, he's healing the blind, the deaf, the lame. He, he, he's, he's doing righteous things. This church needs to be a church where miracles happen. The is people coming to know Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. 
I want to see people also say, I'm going to serve God for the rest of my life and get baptized and, and proclaim to the world, I am going to follow Jesus the rest of my life. When you've reached an age of reasoning, you do that. It's a, it's a commandment. No, it's not a question. It's a commandment <clears throat> that, um, that we do that. It's not, it's not for salvation. It's just obedience and it's also... Chief priests and scribes saw the wonderful things that he did. And they fell on their face, right? No! No, they didn't. He's, he's healing people. He's cleansing the temple of the sin that they brought in. That they profit by. Oh, they were making a fortune. They're getting rich on the sacrifice. And Jesus has come to die. And it says... The, and, and it says uh, and when the chief priests and scribes saw the wonderful things that he did and the children crying in the temple and saying Hosanna in the son of David I like that we just had the children doing that didn't they you were pleased with it weren't you the high priests were, they weren't they weren't they were sore displeased I can imagine people coming in here yes people in high places in America coming in and seeing the children waving there and they say oh, child abuse <laughs> I can see but, but those children they're worshipping they were worshipping this morning praying for their own family praying for their pastor praying for their church oh praise God praying to Jesus that's what we want but, the, but they were so displeased and said unto him hearest thou what the, he's saying and Jesus said unto them yea have you, he's talking, they're talking to Jesus. Do you hear, don't you hear what you're saying? Don't you, don't you realize that you're proclaiming yourself to be the son of God? The king? <laughs> Later on, Pilate will put on the cross. Jesus, the king of the Jews. But I can tell you something, do it in three languages, but I can tell you something. Jesus Christ was, it's good that they did it in different languages because Jesus Christ is the king of the universe. You know, so I think they put it up in more than one. I know a uh, language. But Jesus is the king of the universe. It's funny, the high priest did it in derision. Of the, those who put it up as in derision. But it was true. It was the truth. And, uh, and, and, and he have set, and he, Jesus said, Yea, have ye never read, Out of the mouth of babes and sucklings, Thou hast perfected praise? You don't think that Jesus loved the children praising God this morning, uh, repeating after the after the words "Hosanna" in the highest. You don't think Jesus was loving that? Jesus took the children and said, "Bring the little children to me. Bring little children to me." How could the high priest be angry that the children were worshiping God? Because Jesus was had come to claim his 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 rightful place in the temple. And he left them and went out of the city into Bethany and lodged there. Now in the morning, as he returned into the city, he hungered. And when he saw a fig tree in the way, he came to it and found nothing thereon but leaves only. And said, it, said unto it, Let no fruit grow on thee henceforward forever. And presently the fig tree withered away. <laughs> now there's many interpretations of that. Um... There's also some understandings that you can get from it that perhaps aren't literally what he was trying to say. Because Jesus was showing everyone that he, he had power to grant miracles. And all his, all his disciples were really fascinated by that. But you know what it says to me? This is just a personal rendition that it brings to my mind. That, um, that he came back to the temple and there was no fruit there. No fruit. In 70 AD the Romans are going to tear that city apart. They're going to take the temple and they're going to break it apart, not one stone upon another. You know, they're going to destroy the fruit there. And I have to apply it to my life. When Jesus came into my life, I was full of sin. Okay? And he cleansed me. And this is something we have to do periodically. Jesus didn't do it just once. He did it more than once. He, cleansed, he cleanses us. So we have to confess our sin and let Jesus cleanse us. And we as a church, we have to be fruitful. 
This church needs to be fruitful. We, we need to be a house of prayer. We need to see miracles. Jesus wanted that, that, us to see that, 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 that he could just take that tree that had no fruit and just uh, curse it. And we know the last thing I want to do is, is go, I mean, I want to go to heaven and I want to sit on the fence no matter what happens. If I can't get into the, the main thing, put me on the fence. I don't want to be anywhere out. I don't want to be in hell, you know, and I want to be with God. Uh, but I want to come with fruit. Fruit. And I tell you, I tell an old story that I tell often about a man who was weeping. He was dying. <clears throat> and he was weeping and he, he, he was crying out. And, and people came to him and said, um, he, he was, it was, this was a man that had resisted the gospel. He had gone and he had lived his own life. And then when he was uh, about to die, and this is what a lot of people do. And I, I praise God that they, that they come to God, to God finally. But when he came, to, came finally to the, to the gates of heaven and he was about to die, he accepted Jesus Christ as his Lord and Savior. It was a wonderful thing. But now he began to weep uncontrollably. Why are you weeping? They came to him. Why are you weeping? And he said, uh, you, 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 you're going to see Jesus. You're going to die. And instantly you're going to open your eyes and there's Jesus. It's going to be glorious. And he said, he said, I'm not weeping because I don't know that I'm going to be to God to be with him. I'm not weeping because I'm afraid to die. I'm weeping because I'm going to my Lord Jesus empty handed. You understand? No fruit. No fruit. Be sure that you have fruit. That, that, you, that you do good things for God. That you, you, you comfort people with God. You, 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 you give your means and your time and your efforts to the Lord's work. You know, don't do it all for yourself. Do it for God. And so I think that's, that's what comes to my mind here. Uh, the, the, let no fruit grow on thee hence forever. God. A point. Now I know that that may not stand up theologically, but it, it stands up practically. Let's be sure that our church and our, each individual in the church is showing much fruit. When the disciples saw it, they marveled, saying, How soon is the fig tree withered away? And Jesus answered and said to them, Verily I say unto you, If ye have faith and doubt not, ye shall not only do that which is done to the fig tree, but also, in other words, he'll do miracles, but also if ye shall say unto the mountains, Be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, it shall be done. And all things whatsoever ye ask in prayer, believing ye shall receive. And so Jesus, after he cleanses the temple, he tells us to pray. Make sure your heart and your life is pure for God. And God will do miraculous things. Folks, we have a miraculous God. We have a, a God that loves us so much that he died for us. And, um, and we must, in re 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 return to that, live for him. Let us do that. The altar is open if anybody would like to rededicate their life, receive Jesus Christ as their Savior. Uh, if, you, if you need to uh, confess, you do that privately in your, in your heart, and God will forgive you. What, uh, whatever you need, we invite you to come as we sing. Let's all stand. The altar is open.